مدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أعاد الله إياك من النار وما يقرب إليها من قول أو عمل أو اعتقاد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته يبدو كانكم نائمون في وسلفا نعم الحمد لله it's been a long time since I've been here with the brothers of the sea trees in the Gumatan and we ask Allah Jalla wa Allah to bless this liqa to bless this coming together this gathering I help you to be of one of benefit for all of us as you know we're speaking concerning the month of Ramadan the blessed month of Ramadan that which is close upon us soon inshallah ta'ala we are going to be fasting and gaining the good in this blessed month uh, firstly, we have a narration in Abu Hurairah ta'ala As he mentioned, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He said the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He said, Atakum Ramadan Ramadan has come to you Shahr Mubarak he said, a blessed month. A blessed month. So firstly, he, the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he called it a blessed month. And no doubt that this month is filled of blessings. This month is filled of blessings. That's why, as he mentioned, فَرْضَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ عَلَيْكُمْ سِيَامِ so yeah, man, Allah Jalla wa Allah had me fasting for you all in this month compulsory. Made compulsory. And this is from the great virtue of this month. Is that Allah Jalla wa Allah had made compulsory upon the believers for them to fast. This in itself is a blessing because every good that we do or every command of Allah Jalla wa Allah which we carry out no doubt we'll be rewarded for it so long that it is done with two things. So long that it is done with ikhlas, with sincerity towards Allah Jalla wa Ala wal mutaba'ah and with following the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in accordance to his sunnah. And fasting is from the greatest of ibadah, the greatest of worship. So Allah Jalla wa Ala is a blessing for us that Allah Jalla wa Ala had made this fasting this month compulsory upon us. And from the greatness also of this month, as the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in this hadith, as he said, Tuftahu fihi abwabu sama The doors of the paradise, the doors of the heavens, the doors of the heavens, they are open. Those of the heavens, they are open. But to block, fihi, abab al-jahim, and the doors of the hellfire, they are closed. The Ulama mentioned, rahmahullah, mahafdahullah, they mentioned that in this, where the message of Allah was mentioned, that the doors of the heavens, they are open. The kafra al khayr because of the lot of good that the believers, they are upon. That they are fasting for Allah in the daytime. And they are worshipping Allah in salah in the nighttime. The lot of good that they are, that they are doing from the Quran, from the recitation of the Quran, 
and the sorrow of and the charge that they are giving. They better not worry dying. The goodness towards their parents, kindness towards their parents. Wakulu Amal al and every single action of righteousness. Because in this month of Ramadan, the God the believer, he strives and he strives to be more and more good. So he mentioned Sallallahu what is open? The abwaab, the doors of the paradise, is open in this month of Ramadan. And the doors or the gates of the hellfire, they are closed. Min qillatil because of the minority of of Asiyah, of disobedience towards Allah Jalla because the believer they are busy themselves doing what? Worshiping Allah Jalla again. So they hardly find time now to commit sins. So the doors of the hellfire or the gates of the hellfire they are closed. I'd like to ask a question. How many doors are there? The gates are there in the paradise. How many gates? Seven gates. Anyone else? Anyone else? How many gates are there in the hellfire? No. There are eight gates for the paradise, and there are seven gates for the hellfire. Here it is, these eight gates, they are open. More gates to the paradise than the hellfire. This in itself shows the rahmah, the mercy of Allah. And His mercy encompasses everything. The gates, the doors of the hellfire, they are seven. These doors are closed. These doors, they are closed. Now, because of the believers, they are busy themselves again in doing what? In worshiping Allah. Then he mentioned, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which has transgressed, which has transgressed shayateen. Those who love to transgress upon the believers, they are chained. So they are in order. And they are ones who they want and the desires to keep coming at the believers by day and by night. Now this is limited because why they are chained up. So we find now in this month of Ramadan, in this blessed month of Ramadan, but the blessings of this month is that these shayateen they are chained up. So what happened? You find yourselves as Muslims now, it's easy for you to submit to Allah Hujjah the world. And as a Catholic, isn't that so? In this month of Ramadan, we see those who are accustomed and does it themselves in acts in which are, are wrong, which is considered to be haram. Or those who are accustomed to smoking in the daytime, smoking the weed. What happened now? You see, this month they lock off. Not only in the daytime, they lock off also in the nighttime. We see those also who are committed fornication, who are committed fornication and adultery. When this month enters, what happened? They lock off their fornication, lock off their adultery. Perhaps they might mention to their, their particular concubine, okay, after Ramadan, we will link. But I the When you may tell the one, the, the pusher man, after Ramadan, I will check you. But I the If you're doing this, and then what happened actually is that you are making preparation for after Ramadan to go back to your evil. But I will be lying in heaven. You're making preparation for your evil. But here in Ramadan, when the shayateen and they are changed. So now, you have more, more ease in your life for you to do what? To worship Allah. It may be difficult for you, 
outside of Ramadan for you to get up in the morning to worship Allah anytime. One, two, three, four in the morning. You want to get up in Ramadan? Go down. It's easy for you. Because these being Shafiqs and Shafi, they are chingam. You want to abstain from doing wrong the month of Ramadan, it's easier for you. Because why? The encouragement from the evil shouting, those traditional ones, the, 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 those who, who have their hips, who their meat will just to misguide and to mislead you. Now they are changed. So what happened now? It's easier for you to do more and more good. That's why when you see a brother is acting in a very evil manner, also in Ramadan, no doubt, you know that something is wrong with him. Something is wrong with him. His nafs is still acting up. This nafs, a nafs that amar to be so, the nafs that which commanded evil, is acting up. So we, so in this month of Ramadan, for the blessing of Ramadan, is that these transgressing shayateen are the achieved of. Lillahi fihi layla. Khayru min alfi, min alfi shahr. For Allah, there is a night in this month that is better than a thousand months. Subhanallah. A thousand months is how many years? Approximately. Anyone? Approximately 83 years. No doubt. How many of us think that we will live for 83 years? To reach 83 years? How many of us? We see the youth today, they are dying. Now when you reach 30, you're an old man right now. You're an old man, you're a grandfather. When you reach 30, because why? You see the youth today, they're dying 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, they're gone. Losing their souls easily. Here it is that this one night, this one night in Ramadan, for the blessings of this month of Ramadan, at one night, is better than a thousand months, better than the worship in 83 years. Subhanallah. This one night. Whatever good you can do in this one night for your ibadah, you're standing up and worshiping Allah Jalla wa'ala. You're reading Quran, Allah Jalla wa'ala. You're making dhikr. You are teaching, you are learning. Whatsoever good that you are doing in this one night is blessed to multiply. It's better than 83 years of whatsoever you do. Imagine this, this one night. Then we have to ask ourselves, if all of this blessing that, that Allah had placed in this one night in the Ramadan, then are we going to be sleeping in this night? But are we going to be exhausting ourselves in worship? Worship Allah Jalla wa'ala more and more. Trying our best to gain every single sense of blessing, every single sense of barakah in this night. What are we going to be doing? You see, many brothers, they are sleeping. Sisters, they are sleeping. Even if our sisters, even if they are going through their menses. They can still wake up in the night time also and worship Allah Jalla wa'ala. They can still make dua to Allah Jalla wa'ala. They can still make dhikr to Allah Jalla wa'ala. Make a lot of dua. Ask Allah Jalla wa'ala to bless them with the good in this, in this life and the good in the hereafter. And to save them from the hellfire. Begging Allah Jalla wa'ala to make them better wives. Ask Allah Jalla wa'ala to keep them firmly grounded upon his path. So there's no excuse for no one. No excuse. This night we can be up worshiping Allah Jalla wa'ala, holding firm to his worship. Trying to gain all the good that we can gain in this night. In this blessed month of Ramadan. And the message of Allah, he continues to mention. He said, Man hurima. Man hurima khayraha faqad hurim. Kum sa'afa is ba'afam. The good in this night, surely, surely you'll be back. Surely. 
from Seba. This night passes him. And he was not the worship of Allah and gaining Allah's mercy and Allah's mafra, Allah's forgiveness. Surely he has been done. There's no doubt. Imagine this. This hadith can be found in Ahmad by Nasai or Sahahu Sheikh Laban. Rahimahullah. So all of this we found where? All of these things are in the blessings of this month of Ramadan. And the blessings of the month of Ramadan. Man Soma Ramadan, Iman and Wahdi Saban, Iman and Wahdi Saban, who fill up with the Kataman and Dabi, who say ever fast in this month of Ramadan, with Iman, Iman, believe in Allah, who tell the world, and believe in all that the Muslim has to believe. Wahdi Saban, and hoping to gain the Tawab, hoping to gain the reward of Allah, who tell the world. We don't be like the Sufis, though, who mention God, God. We wish for Allah, for Allah, not wanting anything from Allah. We just wish for Allah because we love Allah. That's why we wish for Allah because we love Allah, for Allah, for Allah, for Allah. From this narration, shows that what happened, you can wish for Allah, for Allah, without hoping to gain the gift from Allah, for Allah. As mentioned, man saw Ramadan, who said, I fast in Ramadan. Iman, and belief in Allah. Wahtisaba. And hoping to give the, the reward from Allah Jalla wa Ala. Ghufr Allah wa taqadma min thambi. Whatsoever past sins you have committed in the past, could be forgiven. Your major sins you have to make tawbah to Allah Jalla wa Ala. Whatsoever sins you have committed. Your minor sins, all of this is going to be forgiven. Imagine this. Then he mentioned, for the blessed also, of the Surah Ramadan, he mentioned Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam man, man, man qama Ramadan Whosoever stands in the Ramadan Iman and wahti sabr With Iman, with belief in Allah Wahti sabr, hoping to gain Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala Jalla reward Same thing Whosoever sin you commit will be forgiven He mentioned also Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Man qama la ilat al-qadr Whosoever stands the night of decree Iman and wahti sabr Hoping to, hoping to gain, again, with Iman, the belief in Allah, hoping to gain Allah's reward. Whatsoever, whatsoever sin you've done in the past, you'll be forgiven. Ramadan, the Ramadan, for what Ramadan? For the Ramadan, all this is what what to do. All these things, they are what? They are also again, that they are an atonement for your sins. Atonement for your sins. On one Ramadan, the next Ramadan. When Jum'ah, the Jum'ah. For one Jum'ah, another Jum'ah. For one Salah, the next Salah. Salat al-Khams. All these are what atonement for your sins. For who? For the one who, who stay away from major sins. And if you make it, if you create it, you have a major sins, then you have to make tawbah to Allah Jalla wa'ala. You must make tawbah to Allah Jalla wa'ala. And I would love to ask my brother Shino, you know, what it is, what are the conditions for your tawbah to be accepted? Because why? We want to also make tawbah to Allah even before we enter this month of Ramadan. Before we enter this month of Ramadan, we want to make tawbah to Allah Jalla wa'ala. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, or you believe, tawbu ila Allah. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, tawbu ila Allah, tawbatan nasuha, or you believe, Repent to Allah with a sincere repentance. What is this tawbah of Nasuha? What is this sincere repentance? We all would love to know what is this sincere repentance. In order for what? For us to repent to Allah Jalla sincerely. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to forgive us our sins. So we love to ask the brothers here. What are the conditions 
for your tawbah, for your repentance to be accepted. This side. One of them, as the brother mentioned, is not returning to the sin. This, walillah alhamd, is not exactly as the brother mentioned. Alhamdulillah, he tried. He's very close. But it is, if someone help him, I get it from you. It's intention. No, but they say to the brother, they mention. One of the same exact one they mention. But there's one thing missing. Yeah. Barakallahu fi Now, deciding to yourself, having the azima, the determination to yourself, never to return back to the sin. Because if it is, kamakwala, kamakwala, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Atta'id bin Adam, kama Adam balahu. The one who repents from a sin is that the one who has no sin. So if the one who made sin say repentance from that sin, then that sin will be erased from him. And if he returns and he does the sin again another time, he may stop again, six years to erase from him again. But if it's the condition is that he must not return to the sin, then if he returns to the sin, then all the rest of the times he has done the same sin, he has to pay for it. This is for Muslim Allah But it's from, from, from the top of the Nasuha, for the sincere person is that he must decide himself. He told it to himself never to go back to commit that sin again. Barakallahu fi. Number two. Second condition for your top to be accepted. This sin. Sincerity. It must be done with ikhlas. You must do your tawbah to Allah Jalla Not for the people to hear about your tawbah. Not to be heard as soon as you have made tawbah to Allah Jalla But you must make your tawbah sincerely for Allah Jalla Because if your tawbah has no sincerity towards Allah Jalla then it will not be accepted. Thirdly, this is another condition. The middle. Sorry? Interacting with Allah. This side. Two so far. What is the timidity of self? Never to go back to the sin. Secondly, we have what? Sincerity. Number three. Making tawbah in its correct time before it's too late. When will it be too late? Anyone? When you die? Four fajr. Four Go again. When? When the? When the soul reaches the throat. Now. When the soul reaches the throat. It's a job of the Ahli Gumbal and the Arab. One of you all is going to be answered, meaning that your tongue will be accepted. So long as that the truth is the soul has reached the truth. When this happens, that's it means that you're dying. You are in the stage of dying. When, it's, when the soul reaches the throat, that's it. When again? I'll give you all a hint. It's from the major signs on your mouth. Huh? When the sun rises in the west, when this happens, and there's no more tower, when this happens. So we have also made it in the correct time, before it's too late, that's three. Number four. Feeling 
remorseful. Maqala sallallahu another tawbah. It's a feeling remorseful. Regretting that act. I do you have This is tawbah. Number five. Number five. I think I want to get it. Number five is what? Number five. Okay, so you're making talk about Allah for Jalla or something. Huh? Leaving off the act. <laughs> Leaving off the act that you're doing. You can't be doing the act and then say that you're making trouble. And you're doing the act. You must stop the act that you're doing. Even if you are leaving off your salah, then you have to start praying your five times salah. If you leave it off fasting with Ramadan, then you have to start fasting. Even this, that you are committing some evil act, you have to leave off the act. And these are the five conditions for a Torah to be accepted. So in this last month of Ramadan, no doubt, we should be busy ourselves in doing what? In making Torah to Allah Jalla wa Ala. Making this tikfar, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Seeking Allah Jalla wa Ala's forgiveness night and day. Because all of these, I think that which one, which is, which is going to read and raise up our blessings in this month of Ramadan. And remember, we are trying, inshallah ta'ala, to exhaust ourselves in every single form of ibadah. Exhaust ourselves. In the daytime, we are busy ourselves in fasting and starting, number one. In the daytime also, we are busy ourselves in making dhikr. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allah akbar. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. Making dhikr, who day you making dhikr to Allah jalla wa ala? In the daytime also, reading the Qur'an, reading the Qur'an, you have a whole Qur'an to read, from start to finish, read it in Arabic, read it in English, understand its meaning, listen to the rules, listen to the lessons from the, from the shayukh, from, from, the, from, from the ulama, from the scholars, from, from the tulab al -ilm. For the truth of knowledge, listen to rules, listen to classes, listen to sessions. That means you have your ears busy. Have your ears being busy. And remember to Allah. They're going to aid you also upon obedience to Allah. While you're in your cars, instead of listening to something that is haram for you, play something for the people of the Sunnah. Listen to something so, what? so you can gain. You gain the knowledge. And you're gaining blessing also because you are in the act of ibadah. That you are taking knowledge, you are seeking knowledge, so you're also in the act of ibadah. That's what daytime you feel with worship. And worship is not, not just only that you have to be in salah. Ibadah, kullu ma yuhibbu Allah wa yarada, is everything which Allah loves and which He's pleased with. Min aqwab al af'al. From statements and from actions, zuhiruhu wa batin, that which is apparent. That which is him. Everything which Allah loves, or which He's pleased with, from your actions, from your statements, what is apparent, what is hidden, it is worship. So you fight for it, so you have to find yourself in Allah in the daytime, you have many different acts of ibadah to do, to keep yourself busy. In the nighttime also, after you break in the, after you break in the fast, the after you break in the fast, what happened? Soon after the other is gonna call for Isha. Don't pray Salat to Isha and then go away. And pray Salat to Isha and remain there in the masjid. For what? For Taraweeh. So now then you do what now? After you're fasting whole day, now you're gonna be standing now in the night time. So then you're gonna fall under the hadith, the narration, man, man, summer Ramadan, who said, I'm fasting Ramadan. And the next, the next generation, man, come Ramadan, who said, man, stand Ramadan. So you're going to fulfill these two generations now. 
Because in the daytime you are fasting, but in the night you are And in the night time you are standing. Then, then you are aiming, you are heading towards doing what? To getting your sins. Be forgiven by Allah. When it is that the Tarawi is finished, and you go home to your houses, what are you going to do now? Turn on the television? La. After you tie yourself in worship, if you're still after Tarawi, you have more strength and you want to be up also. Well, I bet nothing is wrong with this. But then be up in ibadah, be up in worship in Allah. Read the Quran, read the books of Sikh, Islamic jurisprudence, read the books of Aqeedah, so you can strengthen Aqeedah, strengthen your belief system. Know what Allah wants from you, what Allah wants from your worship, what what He wants from you. To submit to him in order for you to get close to he Allah in order for you to gain his paradise. Be with your family. Don't leave your families at home and go out and lie me on the blocks. When the time comes for night and after you finish prayer, you have to Don't leave your families alone in the houses and you out on the blocks lying. You out on the blocks selling drugs. You out on the blocks smoking drugs. Or you're out on the blocks harassing women. Or you're out on the blocks looking for some kind of evil. They tell yourself, Allah. When you finish in the masjid, then you go home to your houses. Go home to your house with your family, with your wives. And do some other act of ibadah. Even if it is for you to make fit yourself. For you to go home. And you lie on your beds. Make your thinking, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, until sleep comes to you. Go to go in your beds, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you wake up, again, you wake up to the work now, because you have the intention not to wake up to the work, to fast again in the morning. So your whole day, your whole night, is just circulating around what? Around ibadah, around worship. Give the, 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 the PlayStations a rest. Give the phones a rest on the social media that you want to be on. The social media is there. It has a benefit and it has a million. It has a million harm. Don't let this harm now take us away from, 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 from gaining this month of Ramadan. But after we leave the masjid, if we actually go to the masjid, or if we actually go to the masjid, then we leave and we go home what? We play games now. Play games on our phones. For one hour, two hours, three hours. Or PlayStation, or whatever we have now to play games. Play games whole time. Whole night to play games. Two, three in the morning. You're not going to your best three in the morning. To force yourself now to wake up again. To, 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 to do what? To start fast. Maybe you might be making the start fast. And the fact become hard upon you. No. Nah. It's only one month, brothers and sisters. And this one month flies very fast as you do. As the month begins, two twos, we see what happened. One week has gone. Two weeks, three weeks, a month, comes. Yom the day of Eid comes. And what happened? Then now we feel remorse from God what? We wasted our time. We wasted our time doing what? Doing all kind of foolishness rather than being in Allah Jalla Wallah's worship. We don't have time. For backbiting. You don't have time for slandering. You don't have time for committing these 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 these, these heroes acts with what you're accustomed to doing on Sakura Ramadan. But you have time to be submitted to Allah. Because why? This is the blessed month of Ramadan. You want to give the blessing to Allah. It is a time in which blessings are multiplied. Blessings are multiplied. If blessings are multiplied, then you want to maximize. You want to maximize the multiplication in this month of Ramadan. So you want to be doing good in the daytime, whole day. And whole, whole night you want to be doing good. Acts of good, acts of good. You want to sleep less, especially in the last 10. Especially in the last 10. You want to be up most of the nights, all the nights. 
You want to be up? Let's try to use the daytime, let me mean the morning time for sleeping. The morning time, shalom ta'ala. Let's try to use this time to gain some sense of rest. But in the night time, as the wife of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Arash just mentioned, concerning he, the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that when comes the Ashur Awakhir, the last ten nights, what did she mention? That the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to do it. This time. Is it one thing that I just mentioned? Yes. Ahya Layla. You would be up in the night. What again? Huh? Now we know he used to be most times in, in, uh, in the Masjid, in the which he used to explain every takaf. But you go with the Hadith. Huh? Now, as you mentioned, that he used to tighten his izar. He used to tighten his izar. We all know what is the izar, you know? The kind of rap line. He used to tighten it. As the mention, as the mention, tighten it like someone who is about to do hard labor, to work hard. As you take this ishad, you will take your belt. You know when you take your belt, you will lift something heavy. You will do some hard, some hard work. You take our belts so we can take that. We can, we can, we can carry the heavy load. We can, we can undertake the, the, the heavy set of work, no doubt. And some say it meant also by he used to take this ishad is that he used to abstain from women. He used to abstain even from his wives. Let that have an intercourse. Exactly, the brother mentioned that he used to spin the calf. So, of course, he wouldn't have to have intercourse while he spin the calf. So, I'm missing the Quran. As I mentioned, and do not spin the intercourse with your wives while you are spin the calf in the massage. And what again he used to do? He used to wake up his family. He used to wake up his family. So he was not someone who was only concerned about worshiping Allah by himself. He was not one who had this level of selfishness as long as he is doing the good and he don't business. But he used to wake up his wives also, wake up his family for them to worship Allah. So it's for you also. Even if you are here to calf, you can have your phone, call your wives, call your children, wake them up so that they can do what? They can worship Allah. This is how you want to be. The last step, you want to be at the race horse. At the race horse. When the race horse reaches close to the finishing line, what he does? Rock back now and say, Khalas, I'm making it already. Nah. Even if he's in front, way in front, what he wants to do? The one who's riding in, want to make sure he break the record, that's so. Want to break the world record. So the resource, when he reaches close to the finishing line, it's more speed. He gives it, he exerts himself to the fullest, giving all, every single thing. This is how we ought to be also in the month of Ramadan. This is how we ought to be also. Don't get tired, don't get weary with the first ten and the second ten. No. When I say no, I mean that, yes, you get tired, you get tired, I mean, tired yourself with the ibadah, and tired yourself with the When I say don't get tired, don't get worried, I mean, I don't say, okay, that's it, no, you're gonna get worried on a rock back now when you see you reaching the last of it. La. Why? Very good. Very actions. 
is by his last action, the seal of the action, meaning you will be judged. Your last actions. Your last actions. So even if in the first ten you will love sin, the second ten you will love sin, even if you were doing good, when you come to the last ten, remember this narration, the actions, just by the, just, just by the last to the actions. So no, tell yourself, okay, I'm going to exhaust myself to the fullest now in these last ten days, these last ten nights. I'm going to push every single thing I have. To give Allah Jalla blessings. To give Allah Jalla mercy. Because I want that when this month of Ramadan ends and passes me, I want, inshallah ta'ala, that I can come on the day of Eid, on the night of Eid, I come out of Ramadan at the day that my mom has given birth unto me. This, this, this should be your intention. To push for this. And if someone he has his intention, no doubt he's going to strive very hard towards this to fulfill this. If you have this intention and you're sincere to your intention, then no doubt you will work hard from the beginning of Ramadan to the end of it. And when the end of it comes, and you have exhausted yourself in worship in the daytime, in the nighttime, you have to thank Allah. And praise Allah Jalla wa ala. And still leave a heart on said Ramadan. Still leave a heart because why? Allah Jalla wa ala. If it is you think that only in Ramadan you have Qiyam al standing in the night time, no. You have to have your off so you can wake up in the last till of the night also, but the best of the time. You wake up in the night and pray at the Hajjul. The last till the night, better. And pray the Hajjul. If you think that fasting is only in Ramadan, la. the message of Allah. He's the fast on a Monday and a Thursday. So you can also continue fast on a Monday and Thursday. He's the fast on a 13th, 14th, and 15th. I have obeyed. The white days. He's the fast also. And the six days of Shawwal. He's the fast also. And all the different fast in Nawaf from, from the Nawaf. It's also a fast. You have fast. So you can fast in the weekdays. You can fast in the months. You can fast for Allah Jalla wa'ala. But don't think that because Ramadan is over, then fasting is over. Don't think because Ramadan is over, then standing in night time is over. La. Don't think that Ramadan is over, then you the Quran a lot, it's over. La. But the door of Ibadah, the door of Ibadah, the doors of Ibadah, they are open. And it is for us to take the advice of which Allah Jalla wa'ala which had mentioned and commanded he, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And I told him Worship your Lord until certainty comes to you Worship your Lord until death comes to you So we don't want as soon as Ramadan is over that's it, our worship is over as if you're worshiping Ramadan no. You worship it more in Ramadan, no doubt. You worship in Allah Jalla wa'ala. But when Ramadan is over, is Allah Jalla wa'ala still there? Naam. When Ramadan is finished, will you think Allah Jalla wa'ala is also finished? La. In Allah hayyun la yamut. Where Allah is, Allah is ever living. Will never die. So when Ramadan is over, your act of worship is not over. Your goodness will do this not over. But when Ramadan is over, then you have to remain continuous upon the worship of Allah Jalla wa'ala. You have to remain steadfast for the worship of Allah Jalla wa'ala. You may not exhaust yourself in the manner that you were doing it, but at least for this one month that you were doing it for, then it should be a great sense of consciousness for you to tell yourself, I'm going to continue to worship Allah Jalla wa'ala. I'm going to continue to remain steadfast in my worship to Allah, to Allah Jalla wa'ala. So next year Ramadan can meet me be in the Allah, the permission of Allah, it can meet me in a better state than this Ramadan, than, than the state that this Ramadan has passed me, had met me. You want to be in the best state, 
and the next Ramadan comes, you will even, even wish for Allah even harder than before. And so you want to keep going with your lives. So the more Allah blesses you, the more He blesses you, to see Ramadan, the more Ramadan, is the more you want to increase, increase more and more in your worship. قال صلى الله عليه وسلم خيركم من طال عمره وحسن عمره. He said the best of you is the one at which he gets long life with beautiful actions. Long life with beautiful actions. This is what you want to be. That every Ramadan comes. Every Ramadan comes that you have, you have done better than the Ramadan of which went before. Everyone, everyone, everyone. Imagine you keep doing this. Allah bless you with life to see 80, 90. Imagine this. Imagine this. How you store up your blessings for the next life. May Allah Jalla wa help us to really exhaust ourselves in every act of ibadah that we can do in this month of Ramadan. And now inshallah ta'ala we would like to mention the condition for the compulsion of the fast this month of Ramadan. So you will know as long as that all of these conditions we mentioned that all of us here we actually meet these, these conditions then the fast is compulsory upon us. Firstly, Al-Islam and Islam. You must be Muslim. It's not compulsory. No, it wouldn't be authentic. It wouldn't be good. The fasting from whom? From the kafir. Because fasting is worship. But ibadah. لا تصيح من الكافر and worship is not taken from the kafir so someone mentioned why? huh? because in order for any act of ibadah of worship to be accepted we must have two things not so? one of them is one huh? Al-Ikhlas, the act of worship must be, must be done sincerely for Allah Jalla wa ala. And the Kafir, he is not upon the sincerity towards Allah Jalla wa ala in his worship. He worship Mary Satri, Jesus the son of Mary. And he worship him again. Sita, Ram, Buddha, Uzayim. Or whatever they make, but from these false gods. And secondly, in order for the act of worship to be accepted, is that it must have what? Secondly, it must be in accordance to what? To the sunnah of Isa Alaihi Wasallam. The Kafir doesn't have this also. That is the reason why his act of worship should never be accepted. Now, فَإِذَا أَسْلَمَ لَا يُلْزَمْ لِقَضَاءِ مَا فَاتَتْ So if it is that he, he accepts Islam, then he is not commanded to do what? to make up whatsoever had passed him. Secondly, al bulu maturity, puberty. فَلَيَجْبُ السِّيَامِ عَلَى مَا لَمْ يَبْنَى حَتَّى تَكْلِيفِ So, fasting the compulsory upon the one who has reached puberty, And I'd like to hear from you, inshallah ta'ala. What are the signs? What are the signs of someone reaching puberty? Start with this side. Now, one brother mentioned pubic hairs. Very good. Zenta. Huh? Wet dream. That thing, huh? A wet dream. In male or female. These two, in male or female. This side. Huh? 
what is maturity? What 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 would make us do that someone has reached uh, reaches the uh, state of, of, of majority? So we have young people here, and we have we have dream. But a woman is seeing her menses. She, she starts seeing her menses. Next one. Cross. Pass. Reaches the age of 15. Now, when a male or female, when they reach the age of 50, when, when, when the age of 50 so if not, not of the signs to your parents and them, so long as they reach the age of 15, then they are considered someone who is mature. Now, the couple he the they've been lifted from three people. But the Quran means whom she mentioned from them, Asubi Hata Yahtali, the young boy or the young girl, until they have my dream, until they reach this, this uh, state. Well, I can now, Yasih Hussiyamu, Minahayri, Nabalim, but the fasting of the one who has reached maturity also, it is to be also, also good and authentic. Lord, so give the fast. If they can differentiate, the most time the age of Tamiz of differentiate is like from seven going up. They can differentiate the joint around, they know things, they can differentiate things. And they mentioned also it is a comment that the one who's in charge of that young boy or young girl, that they should command them to fast. They are in order to make them get accustomed to fasting. Second, and thirdly, that they must have their intellect, they must be correct, right in their mind, they must be seen. So fasting is not compulsory upon the one who is crazy, a madman, or mad woman, or the one who is an imbecile, retarded, the compulsion upon them. They call the Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Rufi al Qalam al Athalath, they've been lifted on three people. Rufi al Qalam al Athalath, they've been lifted from three people. Fadakar min hum al Majnoon, Hatti al Fiqh, she mentioned the mad person until he becomes seen. The mad person until he becomes seen. Rabi number four, Asih. The person must be good in health. So whosoever was sick, don't have the ability to fast, it's not compulsory upon him. But in some asaha, Siyam. But if he fast, his fast will also be good. I mean, if it is that, he, his sickness is somewhat that it is minor. They call the Ta'ala, Allah's statement, Whomsoever was sick, or on a journey, then make it up in other days. But in Zalam Mara, as long as that his sickness goes away, Wajibah Alayhi, it's compulsion upon him, a qadha for him to make up, ma'afthara, means min min ayam. Whatever day is that which is that he broke it, he's done with done, or he become better, he has to make up these days. Number five, al iqama residency. He must be a resident. In order for it to be compulsory upon him, he must be also, he must be a resident. Fasting is not compulsory upon the one who is a traveler. The Qawli, as I mentioned, is in ayah, so whomsoever is on a journey, whomsoever is sick, or 
I have suffered always on a journey. Let him make it up in other days. Walla Osama al Musafir, Walla Osama al Musafir, Saha Siyam. But if the Musafir, the one who is traveling, he travels, he is fasting, his fast is also authentic. He fast is also authentic. وَيَجْبُ عَلَيْهِ الْخَضَاءُ مَا أَفْتَرَهُ فِي السَّفَرُ As Kabbalah wanted to make up whatsoever he fasted broke while he was a traveler. Now, the distance of traveling, as I mentioned, it is 48 miles, approximately 80 kilometers. So the, so the Ulema mentioned that it based upon the earth. Give me time, Ya Rahman, I mentioned it based upon the earth, based upon the custom of that country, where they consider to be a person to be a traveler. That country, then he's a traveler. But we know that you're traveling from, from Big Martin to Porus Bay. You're not a traveler. You're traveling from Big Martin to, uh, to Arima, you're still not a traveler. But if you're traveling from Big Martin and you're heading to Toko, you're heading to Sidras, nah. in our order, our custom, it's not to be able here. We say what? Yes, he's traveling. That's what he's traveling. And you will also make provisions and carry provisions. You'll carry something to snack on, something to eat on your way, some drinks. Because you don't want to have to stop to go in a shop or anything. You just want to go a good distance. So, in this, from our, from our custom, you say, okay, you go in citrus. You say, it's not all traveling today. Now, because it's considered to be a, a travel. Number six. Al Khulu min al Haydi wal Nifas. Being free from Haid, from menstruation, and after child will bleed, is for the woman. Fal Haid, wal Nifas, wal Fasa, ayajbu alayhima, ayajbu alayhima song. So the woman who is menstruating and the one who is going to the after child will bleed, fasting is not compulsion upon her. But you have a life, man. But it is haram for them to fast. They can't say, okay, yes, you know, I'm, although I'm in Sweden, I still have the ability to fast, I'm going to fast. So, although I'm going to my other child to be I have the ability, I'm feeling strong, still, like I'm, I'm, so I'm going to fast. No. It is haram for them to fast. The Qawli, he saw Allah, 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 he no fast. But that is from the deficiency of her That is from the deficiency of her religion. And to make up the fast of the Ramadan is compulsory upon the both of them. They call the Aisha. They call the Aisha. He said, He said, This used to occur with us, meaning administration. Fanumar bi khadai sawm, so you command it, we make it up the fast. Wala numar bi khadai salah, I will not command it and make it up the salah. Now, so these are the, are the acts of which, if it is, so long as that all of these things, I would like to mention that these conditions are met, then it is compulsory upon us to fast. We have no excuse. We have zero excuse. If you are sick in a manner that which you still have the ability to fast, then you can fast. If it is that you are sick in a manner that you have the ability to fast, or let, or let me make it even clearer. If it is that you are sick, and you can fast properly without shock, without real pain and having yourself. There is compulsion upon you to, to fast. I take for instance, someone may get a, a slight cold. You know, no one's like, well, come on, cold. This is all the stuff you know. But you're normal, you're healthy, you're normal. Then fasting here is compulsion upon you. If it is that you are sick 
in a manner that you can still fast, but it's slightly difficult upon you. Then here, it is dislike to fast, but you can still fast. If it is that you are sick in a manner that if you fast, you will destroy yourself. Then here, it becomes haram for you to fast. It becomes haram for you, for you to fast. Or person take, for instance, an old person. Because of their age, then they are not right. They start forgetting everything. They can differentiate, they lose this, this sense of differentiation. Then they also pass in the compulsion upon them. Pass in the compulsion upon them. Because they come like this, they, they, they are like in the stage of a child. That they don't even know themselves properly. In the circumstance, fasting is not to push upon them, and they don't have to, to do what? No? Huh? They don't have to. They don't have to do no kafara. They don't have to feed no one. They don't have to feed no one because, again, a little child, if a little child decides to fast, and then a child broke the fast, or oh, the child didn't fast at all. Does, does, does the little child have to feed someone? Or, or make up the fast outside of, outside of Ramadan? No. So the one who reaches the old age, and they are not correct in their minds, they are not stable in their minds, then this person also fasting is not compulsory upon them. I will leave the room open for now, inshallah, for any questions, for me, you may have questions concerning uh, fasting. Or this one Ramadan. So the floor is open, Yes, sir. Don't feel shy. I'm going to ask the question if you are wounded, if it's compulsion, if it's compulsion, why do Still fast. <clears throat> if you're wounded in a manner at which you've gotten a chop, something, and your blood is flowing, your blood is flowing, and it's weakening you, and you are in need of some things to, not to nourish yourself, strengthen yourself, then the fasting will not become compulsory, you follow the mechanism of the ones who go to see. But if you're wounded and you're normal, the fast is compulsory. Take for instance, you have a, a, a broken leg or a broken hand with no pain. It's in cast and everything with no pain. Are you wounded? Huh? No. Yes, you're still wounded. <laughs> you're wounded. You have a broken hand and you're wounded. It's in cast, but you're getting no pain. The fast is compulsory upon you. But now you are wounded, and then in the middle of the day now, the same broken hand starts to pain you severely and bearable. In this circumstance, you break the fast and you make it up on other days. Now, is there a question? I'm going to ask the question in terms of praying. If someone is working, and the time comes for the prayer, if there is any other way you can pray other than prostrating. <clears throat> As Allah mentioned, I'll establish the salah in my remembrance. The salah, it is compulsory upon every single Muslim valid who is which maturity <clears throat> and of course those who free from the Mawani 
I think that this prohibits the queer like in the fast, like high like menstruation, fast and these things. The fast is compulsion. We have no excuse when the time comes to pray, not to pray. The Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned the Brian with Hussein, the Lord of the Army. So the Qa'iman, pray standing. فَإِلَّمْ تَسْتَطِيعُ فَقْعُودًا If you're not pray standing, then sitting. فَإِلَّمْ تَسْتَطِيعُ فَعَلَى جَمْعًا If you're not pray sitting, then on your sides. So the prayer in no circumstance we have the permissibility, let's leave it off like that. Under no circumstance. If you're working somewhere, we have to find somewhere in a job, a place that is clean, that is free from filth, like mess from human or from dog, urine, all this stuff, a place that is free from, from these khumai. And you have to establish your salah. You must leave off whatever you're doing and establish your salah. There is no excuse for anyone to say, okay, well, I'm at work right now, so I finish work later, I'm going to make up my dhuhr, make up my ass, make up my maghrib, make up that. People do this sometimes when they're out in school. Leave off the dhuhr, leave off the ass, when they reach out to ass, or to maghrib. Then now you make up for the dhuhr, for the ass. La, this is not permissible. So there, there is no excuse for anyone to take up the prayer, even if you are locked up in a cell and you cannot stand and you have no clothes and you are naked and you have no water to make both of And there is no dust, no way. But at Tayyamun, even if you are in this state and the time comes from the Salah, it is compulsion upon you for you to establish the Salah. No excuse at all, at all, at all. Even if you lie down on your bed and you have a stroke, your whole body you cannot move. Your whole body cannot move. All you can use is your head and your eye also alone to do the action. You have to establish the soul. This is how serious the soul is. And this is how Allah Jalla Wala taking away our excuses from us. Say that, that we cannot worship under any circumstance we can end up. And the prayer then comes, we have to pray. We have to pray. Now, any other question? Now, in this circumstance, where it is that you you were prescribed uh, to take certain medication for some kind of ailment, and uh, it is incumbent and compulsion for you to have to take this uh, this uh, drug. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even like to use the word drugs in, in, in this circumstance. You have to take the medication. You understand? You have to take the medication. The medication. Then you also fall under the, under the one who is sick, so you have to make up the fast. Also, Ramadan. No, no, so long as that, that you are free from having to use it, then it becomes compulsory upon you again, it starts your fast. No. no, definitely, definitely. But if it is that it's a something minor which is that you are not in need of, you are not in need of, then the fast will be compulsion. No, but if you are in need of it, take for instance someone who is diabetic who has chronic diabetes, they need. 
to eat at certain time. They need to drink uh, to, to drink water. They need to take the tablet at, 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 at certain time. This person now, if, they don't, if, if it is that they, that they leave it off, they can faint and become extremely ill. It's compulsory upon them to take the take their medication. Haram for them to fast and listen. Because why? You're destroying yourself. Allah mentioned the Quran. وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَمْ مِنْكُمْ رَحِيمًا Do not kill yourself, that Allah is merciful unto you. وَلَا تُلُكُ بِأَيْدِيكُمْ إِلَا تَحْلُكَ And do not throw yourself to destruction by your own hands. Now. Now. There are the question in terms of a woman going through a sickly pregnancy. In this circumstance, she'll fall under the one who's also sick, so she'll have to make it up outside of her mind. No. No. If it is that she has the ability that she can breastfeed and also uh, fast, which many women have the ability to do this, Either this doesn't affect them in no way, or it doesn't affect that they, they don't have a uh, 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 breast milk, so they can't feed a child. Then, in this circumstance, they come in upon them and fast. Now. No. But ask the question if it is that you woke up late, you didn't get to take this suhoor, to take this. So this meal before they start the fast. What is the condition of this one? It's compulsory upon them that they have to spend the daylight night without eating, drinking anything. It's compulsory upon them to go through the day with their fast. No. They have to. Yeah, they have to. Huh? All salat. If you miss fast, you miss fast. No, I have that not to be stuck in that. This is a, 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 a separate uh, worship. The fast is one thing, and the salat is is the next. Right? Meaning that you have to wake up late after the sun and the rest. So you didn't start the fast, nor did you pray. So the fast. But normally you start the fast before fast. Because <laughs> you, you have to start off before dawn comes. Not so? Yes, you have to start off before when, 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 when the time when the, when the dawn comes in, as the time that your fast is the family guy. Right? Now, consider the prayer. The Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Man an salat or nasiyahan, khalisonihayat the Quran. Whomsoever sleeps on a salat, whomsoever sleeps on a prayer, or you have forgotten it, let him pray as soon as he remembers. He has to pray. So the fast, you continue your fast without eating or drinking anything. The prayer, you have to wake up, as you wake up, you have to pray immediately. Any question? I think I saw you go out some more. Now, what else the question in terms of you are stuck in traffic? And the time for salah comes. Of course, you weigh all the difference. Maybe it is that you may have the ability to reach your destination. But of course, what he's speaking about is that maybe you see that the time is looking to go. And you're stuck in traffic and you know for sure that you cannot, you cannot, uh, uh, Reach the destination in time for you to establish the solar in its correct time. So, uh, what are you going to do in this circumstance when you're not facing the Qibla? Even with this also, you pray your solar while you are traveling, certain whether you are on a plane or you are on a boat, 
or whatever, you're in a vehicle and you're traveling, I didn't mention that you're driving, but if you're driving and it's coming come upon you, you what? For you to come out, come off of the of, of, of your vehicle, let's have just one in the correct manner. Or, say for instance, if it is that the time is going out and you cannot stop your vehicle because you are in, a, in an area which is dangerous for you to stop your vehicle, then you have to pray also that also, no matter what direction you are going, you have to also establish the solar in your vehicle. No, no matter what direction you are. But your intention must be to fix the Qibla, not down. You must have this, this intention. Allah Akbar. Another question? Now, I'm taking vitamins and supplements and supplement before. Fast or after fast, this is totally you must cook or this coming like also into food and drink. You can eat and drink before you start the fast. You can drink after the fast. Right now. So this is what you mentioned this long time in the past. Is that uh, I am also I have a, a, a habit, <laughs> habit also sometimes spitting. I think I got this habit from when I was spasting from a young age because of ignorance again. You used to mention that you know that you can't swallow your spit. So I used to be spitting, 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 spitting right you for fear. That, that's why. That's why the statement is very true. And if you think. That knowledge is expensive, try ignorance. <laughs> so I, I was I was ignorant of the fact. I was thinking about like the age of 11, 12 years. I fasted in primary school and I read. People are, people are asking me, why are you spitting all the time like that? No, I said, but I can't swallow my spit. <laughs> so I read, you spit it, spit it, spit it. Whole month of Ramadan, I spit it. Only to get big, to grow up and to realize that what's going on around was just. We're just Join more to myself than anything else. This is natural. Your spirit is alive, but it is natural. That's where it goes and comes and goes and comes. It is natural. Allah is like this. So it's not for you to be spitting and spitting out about your saliva. That this is going to dehydrate you now. I don't think that can happen. No. But you should not intentionally, I got to spit in your mouth and cool in your mouth also. That's why you're going to drop it and catch my tooth and swallow this down. Then you are heading into the age of your saliva. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> no. So good question because a lot of people have this notion that you can't swallow this with the fast. Because what we call was something that you that you must you must not swallow in the fast, right? What is break your fast? You said something that this is the more line you want to call that break your fast. No. I like to hear that from you. Well, very, 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 very good question. Things that which breaks the fast. Give me one on this side. Vexation. Vexation. La. Un until, until if you, until you, if you, when you get vexed, then you end up. Umar, then you end up, you end up, you end up fainting. Of the language. Of the language. No. Yeah, we are. Yeah. that which breaks the fast. These things decreases your decreases your 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 reward. The fast doesn't break the fast. If you curse and stuff, it doesn't break the fast. Eating now. Six hundred because now. Committing more than a mouthful. Is this correct? No. A man is stuck on Amda, whosoever makes himself uh, vomit intentionally, then he is compared to vomit, he has to make up this fast, the Prophet mentioned. Intentionally. But the one who just happened to rest, vomit just, just like that, then he has no fast to make up. 
No, what are the question? Do you do like intentionally? Like I'm a stranger. Now, what are the question? If someone happened to drink or after that, happen to eat while he's fasting unintentionally, go give me an narration for this. Uh, I don't think that you should eat or drink. No, you should eat or drink. No, you should eat or drink. How? I remember fasting and stuff. Whoever eats or drinks unintentionally. Then, as the first mentioned, Atamam Allah, or Saka, who had the mission that Allah fed him and gave him drink. Then, this circumstance he has, no make up to do, he just has to continue his fast. Right, so eating and drinking breaks the fast. Six and the four breaks the fast. Or again, mention that like vomiting intentionally. Even if you just vomit breaks the fast. Huh? Is if you fast when and if you urine, your fast is broken? No, no, I mean. I was not going to mention then none of us have ever fasted. You cannot breathe. But if you're not breathing holistically, you're not breathing at all, the love of breathing, not a single prayer. Then the Prophet Salatam mentioned, could give me a hadith about the ones that pray at all. Well, the one who leads off the prayer. I'll get it from you all now. Yeah, I want to get the hadith. But the hadith no one can say the one who does not pray at all. The covenant between us and them is the solace. Whosoever leaves it off has committed kufr disbelief. Between a man and shirk, or kufr between a man and, and shirk. But he said, kufr and disbelief is what? Tarak is salah, leaving off the salah. If a person leave off the solar holistically and pray at all, at all, at all, then the most authentic statement is that this person is a murtal, he's an apostate. Takes him off the level of Islam. So if he has no solar and he's apostate, then he has no fast also. No. Right, so we had eating, we had drinking, we had sexual intercourse. We are vomiting intentionally, but again. But by the slander and raise the fast? Huh? Yes? Now, by biting and slander and decreases the actual reward of the fast, but it does not break the fast. Or again, break the fast. Huh? Cupping and hijama, cupping. You know what is That's where you uh you never seen company. Okay, they have the old time metal and they have the new metal. The old time metal is that's where they use a glass with a candle and they place it on the whatever area, and then after it sucks for a while, I take it off, and then they cut the skin a bit, put a razor blade. Put it back again a second time, let it draw all the blood. And this is cupping. Now you have also the, the, the apparatus that we use, like a, like a pump light, with a suction, face on, 
to the same exact thing. Man. The purpose of mention about this is not so. Or the one who, who does a jam. He said, after al Hajim al He said that the one who is doing the coupling, his fast is broken. And the one who the coupling is being done to, his fast is also broken. But when I mentioned, because of the, met the method that was used a long time before, that they used to place the hands on, on the, the area where they have the blood, they put the hand on the toe. In this circumstance, blood can reach into the, into the throat. That's why I mentioned that the one who is doing the coping, his fast is also broken. And the one who is being done to. But as I mentioned, that if it is that they're using uh, all these apparatus, then the one who is doing the coping, his fast is not broken. But the one who is taking the coping, his fast is broken. Now, so coffin, let's go again. Okay. Uh, so you have cut and you have out. Uh, you will have to break the fast. Faint. Faint. Now your person happens to faint. As you were fasting, you faint. Of course, this is going to get out to you for the of which you may have to take something to to see with yourself. That's so all. Your fast will be broken. A person who <coughs> cheats his intention, take first that you are fasting and you uh, you say, I'm this fast, hard to this. I am fasting. You cheat your intention. Is his fast still intact or his fast is broken? Huh? His fast is? It is broken. Why? Because his intention. His intention is one of the pillars. One of the pillars of the fast is the intention. Give me the next pillar for fast. Fasting has two pillars. One is the intention. If a person is fasting, he changes intention, even though he didn't take a sip of water, his fast is broken. Like him changing his intention. And what is the second condition? Action. The next condition is an imsak, is that refraining from every single mustarab, every single thing which breaks the fast. This is the next condition. Now, so. The one who changes intention breaks the fast. Also, the one who became a kafir, a murtad, an apostate, a ridda, apostasy, this also breaks the fast of a person. Or a person, he went, he was fasting normal after he tripped. He went mad. It's crazy. His fat also is broken because the pen is lifted from him. He doesn't even have an idea what he's doing. The pen lifted from this person. Because if he's fasting good, normal. But you know, some people, when they are crazy, it's not like they are crazy 24 7. Sometimes they come back to the normal things. Did he get his blessings for fasting? Did he watch for fasting? Did he get his blessings for fasting? Well, when the pen is lifted from him, nothing will be written against him or for him. Because his actions, he has no intention, he's just doing things. Of course, I mentioned, the Prophet of Allah, 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 the an animal while you're fasting, nothing is wrong with this. When you're fasting, you still have to eat. <laughs> so you don't, you don't have to wait until you break the fast and to kill a chicken or to, or to slaughter a goat or the sheep or a cow, but you can fast and also slaughter the animal. Yeah. 
No, very good question. Well, the question if someone is fasting and he's preparing a meal, he has to taste the meal. Where is your taste buds? In your tongue. So you taste it to know if you have enough salt or if it's sweet enough what you're making, then you have to spit it out. You cannot swallow anything of it. So it's permissible for the one who is a tambah, the one who is a chef, it's permissible for him to taste the food, but he has to spit it out and swallow anything of it. Someone tries to harm you and defend yourself. But firstly, <coughs> if someone, Rafaala, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if someone he insults him or qatala, or he wants, or he wants to fight him, Alaykum Inni Sawim. He has to say, Early I am fasting. Say I am fasting. So you try to refrain yourself from, from, uh, from answering him back or from fighting back. But no doubt, if it is that they are transgressing you, then you have the right to defend yourself. But as I mentioned, the Muslim brother, you try your best to restrain him in every single sense rather than to fight him. But even if the only means come that you have to, then you, then you do what you do to restrain him actually rather than to actually fight him. Now, because the battle of Badr was fought in Ramadan. Uh, so the Mecca was in Ramadan. So they had wars taking place in Ramadan. Now, yeah, definitely. If, if it is that you have to, you know, that you have to fight the enemy, you can't tell the enemy, okay, I'm fasting, please don't shoot me. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, 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 many people have this notion that you know, you cannot fight a war, you know, wars in Ramadan. No. Wars, wars were fought in Ramadan. The greatest, the greatest battle in Badr was fought in Ramadan. If you're fasting, right? And someone tried to press against you and you came out. Now, if, if, if it was done, definitely defending yourself, you are totally in the right, and so the only means to stop them defending yourself, then your fast will go. This doesn't make your fast also. But what if I didn't take too much food, because I wanted to go, so then we get straight hellfire, right? No, not straight. A lot of people always make this mistake, I said they're going straight hellfire. You can clarify, right? No. And what I'm thinking was because when we said it's safe, I think I don't say it. <coughs> no, what happened is that the, 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 the narration of the mention, the book has been the, the one, the two Muslims who, who, who uh, fight each other and, and one kill the other. He mentioned that the both of them is in the hellfire. The one who was killed, he, he, reached, he went to the really reason why. Because why? He had the intention, he had the head to kill his brother, but he didn't get shot. He was defeated. That's why both of them live in hellfire. But if it is that the Muslim brother, if it is that he you, you stand up somewhere doing something and he pull up and, and hits a six and kill you. And you, 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 you had no intention to kill him, nothing at all. You didn't even know what's going on. It's not that this had that as many that, that you are also going to go to the, to the hellfire. No. no. But if it is that you are always fighting, right? take for instance that you shoot him, he's also shooting. His intention is to kill you, your intention is to kill him. You are to kill him. Then in this circumstance, you mentioned the both of you all are in the hellfire. Again, all of this is under the Mashat al Nahij and the Wala. No matter whatsoever Allah wants. If Allah wants, He can also forgive you. But if He wants, He can put you in the hellfire also. Or we are <laughs> so, uh, so if, if, if both of them believe that the other one wants to kill him, 
So when both of them try to kill each other, so I believe you want to kill me, so I will kill you. I will try to kill you. And you will leave that. Is this what you meant? Yeah. So both of them. So one of them trying to kill you before he gets in it. Well, you can be very careful about the hadith. The hadith takes place because both of them will tend to kill each other. No. I know this, this, this is not from the, say for instance, if it is that, that he had done something from the Sharia uh, state and you, 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 you're a Muslim country and, and, uh, and the ruling comes to that which it is that this person has to be, has to, to, to get the Babai. You cannot say no, he will, no, I'm fasting, I'm not Ramadan, so you cannot do it. Or you cannot say that the Hadith, no, okay. Ah, if you kill the Muslim, then you also will have fire, you will kill the Muslim. Yeah. So you fall under the Sharia, and the ruling is that, yes, to get the Baba, well then, I don't know, it's Baba, under the Sharia, you are not yeah, under the Muslim. Now, yeah. what about some people mentioned about that, um, if it is that you, you, you kiss your wife, then you're, Pass is broken, is this true? Huh? No, definitely. Why? Because it mentioned the narration and the Prophet that he kissed his wife also when he was fasting. Uh, but if it is that you kiss your wife and you know that the lead is that they have an intercourse, then you have to stay away from it. Stay away from it. Then, <coughs> if it is that you kiss your wife and you discharge a spoon to kiss him and your fast is broken. If it is that you do a listener, that you masturbate, you masturbate, masturbation, then after you have discharged a spoon, your fast is also broken. You don't believe that, okay, I cannot have sex with my wife, but I'm fasting, I feel that kind of way. I hate you, actually. Love, fast is broken. 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 If he's fasting, I'm going to ask him a question about no, this. A person is fasting and he takes an injection, vitamin right, B complex to strengthen himself up. Is this fast broken or not? You need to get to his mouth then. Huh? No, his fast is broken. If he takes an injection or the medication, is this fast broken? Huh? No, his fast is not broken. He takes an injection of medication. Some medication. His fast is not broken. If he takes an injection to strengthen himself, then this, this takes the root of eating and drinking. It's nourishment. So it will break the fight. If it is that a person he is he is lost in a woman, lost in a woman. Lost so much until he ended up discharging. His father broke up. Yeah. If a person he had he was fasting and he had a wet dream, he woke up and he saw himself. But his father broke up. No? Huh? Very good. What's your talabala falata? So they benefited from three people, and one of these three is who? And now he had to accept it. The sleeping person until he is awake. So why is he sleeping? No, nothing is against him. He didn't do it intentionally. So his fast is good. Still in time. How about the shards and cement? Is that what he meant by this? 
And the, the pre, uh, you have SMC with Toggle Motor. <coughs> so this does break the fast on the one that I mentioned. It's the pre ejaculation tube. Or the breaking of the kind of tube that any one of you to understand, which that's what you call slang. It does break the fast. It just happened to you in time to break what you have to do. There you go, that's how you watch the penis. Anyone else? Me huso. Alright, it's there. Me huso. Anyone else? Huso. Anyone else? Get careful here, but the brother said he watched the. Watch, he has to watch his penis. And the other brother mentioned he has to make a hustle. Anyone else? No one else? You have to? As you mentioned, you have to remove, uh, remove it from your clothes. Is this correct? You have to remove it from your clothes. You got to wash the clothes, wash the area. On your pants or on your boxes or whatever. Change your clothes. So, what you have to do is sprinkle water on the hair. You sprinkle water with your oxygen and shelter. Brush it. Just sprinkle water on the area where the slime is. Just sprinkle water on it. And, in addition to what you mentioned, which you have to Make a stingy towards the penis, you also have to wash two wheels. <laughs> you don't just wash the penis, the penis are good. You have to also wash the testicle. You have to wash the, the two wheels also. This is the difference, as well as you're trying to get some of the same. You don't, you don't just wash the penis, you must wash the two wheels. And come back. And of course, you have to, to make wudu and you sprinkle water in the area, sprinkle water in the area in which the, the after affected with the, the pre junction is affected. Now, for the. So, you talk about the young, the proper, right? The The writer of the question said, seeing that it is incompatible and compulsion, you have to perform the wudu in order to make to make salah. Is there anywhere that it can waver? Now, if it is that person is sick and he cannot use water, <clears throat> then he or he doesn't find water somewhere, he doesn't find water nowhere. Then you have to make a tayammu. Tayammu means that you strike the earth. Check the earth, like your hands, your feet, and so on. Make a tayam on your hand. So you have to be sick, or you didn't find water. Or if it is like, for instance, like you live in somewhere in a very cool country, and if you use that freezing cold water, and you have nothing to, that you can heat the water, is that what you get sick? The circumstances can also make a term. You can sorry, you can make a term for 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 the major or the minor, whether it's have to be or if you have to make husband also. No, for that. If you wake up from a sorry, wake up, but say if you wake up from a dream, a wet dream, you make it hustle, but you are still discharging. What kind of discharge? Still discharging. Okay, you mentioned it is the pre the pre ejaculation, if you will. Yeah, no, I know he 
He meant some semen, and semen is full, actually. But I know he meant by, he meant by semen, pre-ejaculation fuel, he didn't mean spoon. He meant pre-ejaculation fuel, if you see when it's spoon, but I know he meant pre-ejaculation fuel. Sorry, I keep mentioning, when he said um, semen, I keep saying pre-ejaculation fuel. I changed the word that I was going to use. Now, in this circumstance, if you continue and you pray also, and if it is that, uh, and you have to pray again, then you have to make a stanza and watch the step again or two people go and you pray a song again. Now this, this is for the one who, who, uh, who he has this has a very good sickness at which you know he has this represent you come up from him very often. It's a good time you have to you have to uh, make, make his make his also from his from the from the, the cement before if he has sex with the course or a wet dream. He means the also after this and it keeps happening then, meaning that he has to see in the future of fuel, then he just has to make his tincture, which he has to also, as I mentioned, he has to wash the two wheels also, and he prays his solar. Make solar come from again, does the same thing. Yeah. And that's it. Allah ta'ala a'la fa'ala. Akhulu qawli hafa astaghfirullah yu qasih muslimin. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته